The Friday Night Football Frenzy is brought to you by Nichols College. Learn, lead, succeed. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by Bay State Savings Bank. Coming up next on the Friday Night Football Frenzy, Central Mass powers collide in Dudley as the Shepherd Hill Rams host the St. John's Pioneers. It's a mid-watch black and blue special as the Wachusett Mountaineers head north to visit the Fitchburg Red Raiders. Rock Chalk T-Hawk, Algonquin looks for win number two as the Tomahawks travel to Marlboro to battle the Panthers. And get your hitting hats ready. The West Boylston Lions visit the defending Division IV champion, Grafton Indian. How do you like it? The frenzy starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the frenzy. Kevin Shea and Andy Lacombe, and boy, what a night of games. Just yeah. a great slate of games. Yeah, including a game that we're going to start off with that Coaches around Central Mass had circled yes. as a game they wanted to see how it played out. We're talking West Boylston, Grafton. It's a step-up game for West Boylston, Grafton, a defending champ. The hate bowl. No, there no. was a lot of hatred Extreme in the dislike. air. Extreme dislike. Well, this is what you have. You have guys that coach together. You have guys that are coaching against each other. That uh, Mike Ross coached Mike Binkowski in high school. Now Binks coaching for Grafton. All kinds of little subplots in this one. Rossi coached at Grafton. He played there. Now he comes back as the West Boylston coach, and he was firing up the Lions before the game. Val, hold it. This is a human chain. No one lets go of the human chain. What do you flip? He brothers goes down. You pull him back up. That's what brothers do. That's what brothers do. Do not let go of the chain. Do not let go of the chain. Repeat after me. I will not. I will not let go of the chain. Let go of the chain. We are West Boylston. We are West Boylston. All right, there you go. Just to clarify, there is no hatred between the coaching staffs. They are friendly. And but can, there is some surrounding the game. You can stop holding my hand, Kevin. The Grafton line controlling things, just flying to the football. Grafton offense with a great push. Ethan Farrow with a tough, tough run. Same drive, Matt Holbrook fires out to Afatu Melifonwu. And Melifonwu doing the rest. Taking it to the house, 7-0 Grafton. Like Usain Bolt, he never looks like he's breaking a sweat and he's pulling away from people. Second quarter, Melifon was just Ooh. a stud. So fast, so strong, so athletic in a big first down run for the Indians. Grafton's next drive, it is Melifon Wu again. Look at the speed, the vision, stepping through tackles and another big run for the Indians. Great balance, great strength. Grafton fans know you cannot stop Melifon Wu. Direct snap to Melifon Wu. An incredible run. 56 yards to the land of six. 13-0 Grafton, but again, this game won up front on the line. Grafton offensive and defensive lines were great. 34-6, your final. Melifon was a stud. All right, Wachusett and Fitchburg. Big, bad Wachusett Mountaineers on the road in a great mid-watch rivalry with Fitchburg. Third quarter, Wachusett, Josh Furtado. Maybe the toughest man to tackle in Central Mass. I don't know, we just saw Melifon roof. There's going to be a good debate about that. The big fella rumbling deep into Red Raider territory. Chris Vilmarin capping the drive. Mountaineer touchdown plus the two-point conversion. Wachusett up 28 to 13. Red Raiders looking to answer. And they're going to the air. But Blake Lewis is there. He reads it perfectly. Lewis picks it off. He's dishing out some punishment at the end of that run. Love the way he's finishing off that run. Next Pittsburgh series. It's Sal Figueroa, the option pass. It is Lewis again. Lewis Island. The pick and the nice return. I think he's got three picks on the frenzy already this year. Wachusett is rolling, and Lewis loves the cameras. He steps it up. Here come the Mountaineers. Mike Fiorelli on the quarterback sweep. Couple of linemen. His escort into the end zone. Nope, he's into Red Raider territory. Hey, Rusty and it's Egan. a heck of a run. Same drive. Now in the fourth, Cole Durkin getting to the outside, getting to the end zone, four yards on the touchdown scamper. Wachusett's 2-0 on this young season, 35-19 win over Fitchburg. A lot of other things on your mind, Kevin, right? We got a lot of, lot of things on our mind, a lot of reasons to play here, a lot of reasons to come outside yourself and do your best. 
A lot of reasons to lean on your brothers here. Okay? Every play, every play, everything you got. No, no getting tired. You get tired, you will drag you out of the game. You give everything you have every play. Yeah, Coach Lindstrom ready to go. Shepherd Hill community honoring first responders in a pregame ceremony tonight, the week of 9-11, the 15th year anniversary. First quarter, it was Ryan Wong Lee hitting a receiver for Shepherd Hill and picking up first down yards. Here come the Rams. Wong Lee then powering into the end zone for the touchdown, 7-0, Shepherd Hill. Max has it called, so you know it's good. Second quarter, SJ defense, Hunter Gorgas and Flynn McGilvery with the sack. It stalled the drive, and it sets up a Jake Tondell field goal, which is splitting the uprights, 10 to nothing, Shepherd Hill. St. John's with some offense. Steven Buchalia hitting Nick Palata. Big gainer there for the Pioneers. Same drive, Hill defense stepping up. Matteo Belsito ripping the ball away from the receiver. A turnover, Shepherd Hill's got it back. And Shepherd Hill could have taken complete control here, but the St. John's defense locking things down and they do it later as well. Rye Alley recovering a fumble. Pioneers come all the way back and win it. 44 to 20. All right, now we go to Marlboro. Kelleher field the site for the Algonquin Tomahawks. Coming in to visit the Panthers. First quarter, Ryan Berry with Max Sarasoli who pounds it down to the one yard line. Following play, T-Hawks, so Marcus Ellis. Marcus Ellis is in seven to nothing. Algonquin, remember all those plays they wouldn't let us shoot in practice? In just three yards in a cloud of dust right now. Chris Skinner, great defense from the T-Hawks. Rock, chalk, T-Hawk, they win again. 17-7, the final. The old Skinner. All right, we got Northbridge and Lester. Northbridge on the ground. That's right, Northbridge on the ground. Oh, yeah. Cullen McNeil weaving through the defense, turning on the Jets into the end zone, and the Northbridge Rams are up seven to nothing. Just a sophomore. Jeff Reichert with the PAT to make it seven nothing. Kickers don't get a lot of love. We're going to show some yeah. tonight. Oh, you'll see him. Lester's Kyle Padini handing off to Sam Laviolette. Laviolette with a big run, get behind some of those big offensive linemen running tough and a run out of bounds. Lester going to go for the field goal. They like their field goal kicker, Nolan Power. Look at that missile. Great kick through the uprights. Three points makes it seven to three. Lester with a big win at home tonight. The Wolverines take it 17 to seven. All right, here we go. Neshoba hosting Shrewsbury. Neshoba's Nate Manser returned to open and kick 85 yards for touchdowns. Two in a, weeks in a row he's done something like that. Neshoba defense strong tonight. They break one up in the end zone. Shrewsbury trying to get back into this one. Another one broken up by the Chieftains defense. Neshoba got a field goal in this one. They win it 24 to nothing. Jake Fire with a big game. I'll tell you what, that's a, uh, that's a real big yeah. win for Neshoba, Shrewsbury coming off that huge win uh, in week one over Shepherd Hill. But going back to the Grafton West Boston game, this Grafton team, the lines up front, the pit crew, the hogs on the offense and defense, they won this game. Afatu Melifanu is awesome. He may be the best player in Central Mass. He is certainly the best that I've seen so far, but credit the offensive and defensive lines. They won this game for Grafton tonight. Shepherd Hill St. John's, it was a 20 to 14 game in the third quarter in favor of Shepherd Hill St. John's scoring unanswered after unanswered points to win it. Their defense really made some big plays in that first half in order to kind of stem the tide because Shepherd Hill really dominated time of possession. They just couldn't put those extra points in, on the board. Shepherd Hill's a good team. St. John's 2-0, though. They're looking good right now. And credit Tim Griffiths and that Leicester staff, too, coming off that very tough loss a week ago. You saw that game right here on Channel 3. They lose to Auburn. It was whoever was going to have the ball last, it seemed like, was going to win that game. That's a game where a team could get down and not recover from. So credit the team of Leicester and the coaching staff of Leicester coming back and beating Northbridge. It's a rival game. It's a huge win for the Wolverines. Yeah, hey, Griff. He's doing a little color commentary. He's doing a scout. You might want to do that every week. He's a now. Renaissance man. Griff just does it all. He reads to the kids. He does color Nurture. commentary. And he coaches. He's a man for all seasons. We're back with more of the frenzy right after this. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by 
Bay State Savings Bank. Welcome back, everyone. Well, credit Oakmont for stepping up. Lemonster needed a game. They needed an opponent. Oakmont stepped up, said, we will play you. And they played them real tough. The Oakmont Spartans meeting the Lemonster Blue Devils for the first time in 20 years. Incredible. A lot of respect out there from the players at the coin toss. How about a frenzy hit of the night? Seamus Gorman complete to Jared Erskine. Boom! Lemonster's Dylan Tanner with the big hit. Oakmont defense, tough as well. Noah Gray with the carry, and Erskine is there for the stop. Late in the first, Lemons are striking on fourth and 13. Gray rolling out and finding a wide open Tanner in the end zone. Good ball, great job by Tanner to follow his quarterback and get open. Six nothing, Blue Devils. Oakmont looking to answer. Gorman the pass, Anthony Dandini with a great tip and pick for Lemonster. Dandini is a stud as well on both sides of the ball. Such a strong player, Oakmont. Defense was outstanding in the first. Erskine reading the play, closing in the air, breaks it up. Lemister gets the win 30 to 20, your final. All right, full moon fever, North Middlesex and Littleton, 30 to nothing. Littleton Tigers at the half. Third quarter, a fumble on the play. Littleton's Mitch Bedoin recovers. The ground. And the Tigers are in business. Thought they got in almost. Anthony Rouse then taking the rock and running it in for the score. 36 to nothing, Tigers. North Middlesex trying to answer here. Josh LeBlanc rolling, hitting Xavier Marty. Making a few guys missed. And setting the Patriots up in good field position as he rumbles. Same drive, LeBlanc rolls back, hits Jake Hatchie for the touchdown. The Patriots on the board, it's 36 to seven. Fourth quarter now, North Middlesex driving, LeBlanc back to Hatchie. It's a flea flicker, Hatchie's gonna throw, finding Kerry Partridge. The Partridge family going into the end zone, 36-14. Tigers, Littleton getting the win tonight. All right, Jeff Cormier in Auburn at home hosting Tingsboro tonight. Third quarter, 21-0 Auburn. The Rockets coming up big. Jake Daniels, great read off the quarterback, jumping the route and picks it off for the Rockets. And the Auburn offense making it count. Steve Saucer on fourth and two. Sauce on the QB sweep. And a great run, pushed out of bounds at the seven yard line. Next play, Auburn going to the air. Saucier firing a dart to Luke Matthews for the touchdown. 28-0, Rockets. And the Auburn front seven controlling things defensively. Just great team defense. Look at how many hats they get to the football. Everyone stepping up, no room to run. More defense, Joe Hopper with the pick. And Hopper takes off, returns it for a touchdown, but there is a block in the back on the return, so it negates the touchdown. Still a great interception. And Auburn taking that turnover and turning it into points. Anthony Clementi to the land of six. 35-0 Auburn, and the Rockets are 2-0 this year. They win it 35-6. to David Prouty hosting North and leading 27-13, start of the third, Kyle Driscoll to Daryl Bear Jr. There he is, rumbling a little bit. And he's just getting started here, second half. Daryl Bear Jr. in for the touchdown. Touchdown signal on the fan. Proudy's in the end zone. Cameron Doobie then, two-point conversion. He's gonna fight his way in, 35-13. This is the club. We appreciate all your support. And then the kickoff here. Ball's loose. Doobie with the recovery. Things are rolling Prouty's way. Doobie then getting the handoff. And there he goes. He's going in for a touchdown, and they're up 41-13 in the third. More from Prouty. The kick snap low. Joe Tebow had that monster game. Scrambling, but North gets to him. And North would get a couple from Jevon Torres. This time, Kwaku Saforo getting in. Getting in close, touchdown there. Touchdown North battling this good. one to Prouty. Wins it 41-21. All right, from Commerce Bank Field at Foley Stadium, we got Holy Name and Doherty. 
Holy Name going to the air. And the Doherty defense coming up big. Mike Oppon high pointing the football, picks it off. And he's on his way down the sideline. Gets some good blocking. He is gone. Takes it to the house, 72 yards. It's a pick six, it's 28 to eight. Doherty, John Savage for Holy Name, running tough all night. He pounds into the end zone, it's 34-14 right now. Then Brendan Desitels hands it off to Savage again. Savage with a good run down the sideline and getting deep into Doherty territory. They're getting close, they're knocking on the door. 34-16 game, you hand it to Savage. Savage showing off the speed. Great wheels, great vision. Into the end zone, makes it a 34-22 game, and Doherty wins it 34-28, your final. All right, this is Air Shirley hosting Burncoat. And the first quarter, the Panthers come out. Come out rumbling. Blocks flying everywhere. And off go the Panthers into the end zone. 6-0, Air Shirley. Shirley, you cannot be serious. Burncoat now. Malcolm Cassini with the fake on the camera and then plowing ahead for a touchdown. Point after no good. We are tied at six. Ensuing kick. And here come the Panthers. Blocking upfield and blocking the return left. And it's going for a touchdown. By the way, roster's unavailable at this game in air. And uh, air surely taking the lead, 13-6. There was to no six. rosters at all? Uh, roster's unavailable. Panthers go in, so we apologize for the names up there in air surely, but they're up 20-6. to six. Air Shirley gets a close win tonight, 27-26. This is Bartlett and St. Dean. This is my man from Bartlett. Trying the backflip. Oh, he just could not stick the landing, but you know what? The turf was slippery. A Great for stuff. A Third for quarter, oh yeah. Third, look at the hit, the blocks here. Number one, Larry Adontang is not running, he is hitting. There's a second clear out block from the running back. Evan Benham's the quarterback and he scrambles for first down yardage, but man, those are some pops. Sets up Adentang, going 25 yards in for a touchdown. 25-12, St. B's. Bartlett would come back. Dane's crew ready to go. Cody Adams throwing out of this single wing look. They go to Tyler Davern, the big fella. Tight end gets the first down. Then it's his basketball teammate, Anthony Gremski. And look at Gremski go. Takes the sweep, and then he's going to cut it back cross field. Gremski going 50-plus for the touchdown. Gets a fist bump in the end zone. That is the Bartlett way, 25-19. St. B's and Adam Tank just too much in this one. Bernardians or Saints, whichever you prefer, go on to get the win, 35-19. Your final. All right, we got ourselves Bay Path and Money Tech from Muggett Hill! Oh! Love Muggett Hill! All right, right off the bat, Charlie Griggs throws to Travis Gillespie. And Travis Gillespie knocks it down. Yeah, My did. Minutemen are not in Amherst. <laughs> Griggs on the QB keeper. And now, sort it all out. Tyler Pop gets the handoff. Pop gets some blocking. He does cross the plane, in for the touchdown to make it 6-0, Money Tech. Now, they're going for the two-point conversion, but Kyle LaFlame, big defense for the Minutemen. Bay Path getting the win tonight at home, 32-28, to your final. That is a good win. You look at that Doherty win, too. They bounce back after an opening week loss to Lemonster tonight. Four different players scoring touchdowns for Doherty tonight. A complete team win. The, the story of David Prouty's demise is far from exaggerated. Far, far. Exaggerated. They're, they're, they're alive and well. well. And how about Bay Path? Nobody told them that they weren't supposed to beat Monty no. Tech. How about the Rockets? 2-0 and Auburn Rockets, Woo. and they're controlling things up front. It's the old school Auburn way. We're back with more after this. All right, welcome back, everyone. Couple big games to get to for you. One on the high school ranks, one in the college scene. Blackstone Millville Regional taking on Quaybog. This one being played out in Warren. BMR striking first. Second quarter, it's a punt, and the punt is blocked. 
And it goes out of the end zone. So it is a safety. Great special teams play from BMR. Next drive, BMR's Robbie Seifring. Sweet ball to Brian Cerro. Cerro, great yards after the catch. Look at the field vision. Running through tackles, staying on his feet. It's a huge gainer. And it leads to a Blackstone Millville field goal. That is a bomb of a field goal. So it's 5-0 BMR in the third inning. Sounds like a baseball game. Quaybog trying to counter. Going up top. BMR's Jake Wollensack with the interception. The roaming assassin back there. And now we got Seifring with a bomb. And Wollensack hauls it in. Steps through a tackle. He's off to the races. Look at him go, nothing but green grass in front of him. Touchdown, Blackstone Millville. BMR goes on to win this one, 40 to six is your final. Assumption Greyhounds ranked 17th in the country. Taking on Southern Connecticut tonight at home, first quarter, Assumption's defense. Bakari Blunt, great coverage. Now it's ruled no interception, but still great coverage from Blunt. And no worries for Assumption, because a couple plays later, the Hounds Getting one, Jared Casey from Milford. The captain picks it off. The Hounds swarming defensively. Still the first quarter assumption, defense just smothering. Charles Reed, great man-to-man -man defense, breaking up the pass. And the Hounds getting into it on offense. Mark Monks drills one to Ashton Grant. Grant has a nose for the end zone. Seven nothing assumption in front. And then the next possession, it is Monks going up top and looking for who else? Ashton Grant. Grant tiptoeing into the end zone, 14-0 assumption, fist pound for the, for the fans. More defense. Levi Fancher tracking down the QB, strips him of the football. Might be one of Mike Pucko's linebackers. Anthony Libby recovering for assumption. The defense creating havoc for assumption all night. And the Hounds? taking a trip to the land of six. Dylan Oxen into the end zone for the touchdown, 21 nothing assumption in front. Second quarter, Monks flinging it out to Grant, and Grant will do the rest. He slips a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and look out, cookout. Turns on the Jets, off to the races, to the house, 21, 28 nothing assumption. The Hounds are 2-0, 35 to 13 assumption wins. How about them Greyhounds? Chesney's guys are rolling. All right, we're pretty excited about the game we have coming up on Saturday in the high school ranks. Millbury and Uxbridge, both teams come in off of week one wins, impressive week one wins, but now a chance, two good teams trying to figure out just how good they are. It should be a big matchup. Both guys, both teams ready to go. Getting a win week one is really important. Uh, you know, Quabbin is a tough team. We're back and forth all game. Quabbin is a great team, well coached, very fast, and they had great skills, skill guys, and we just had to come out and play D, and they played really well. Great win. Coach Riches does a fantastic job up there. Uh, they're a tough team, uh, very well coached, uh, balanced. They throw the ball well. Uh, running back Maselli is a very good running back. Uh, their line uh, blocks their scheme very, very well. Uh, we have uh, we have our hands full this week. Last week win, it meant a lot, uh, put us on the right path, and I think that'll keep us going forward and keep us ready, keep our heads high. That was a big win for us last week. We were definitely happy with the way that we played. It, def it, it just showed the, the work that we put in in the off season uh, through our weight room and conditioning program. It was satisfying uh, for the kids that we saw great um, improvement uh, from some of our younger guys from year to year. Everyone is ready to step into their roles because last year we had a lot of guys just coming in for the first time so now everyone's settled in. The whole last off season we've been working hard non-stop no breaks and the first win was just a statement saying that we came here to put in work show what we've been doing. Uxbridge is a good football team and it would be certainly a good measuring tape of where our team's at based on how we play against them. All right, good measuring stick game. Milbury and Oxbridge should be a battle. Our coverage beginning at 7 on Charter TV 3. And Kev, you've got a Milbury team that's been building and building and building with their young guys. Now they're a little bit older, juniors and seniors. And you've got a very quick and uh, aggressive offense on the Uxbridge side. This should, should have a little bit of everything. 
Yeah, it should. What you have is two teams with great speed. And right now, that's the name of the game in football. It's all about speed. And that Millbury team has a lot of kids that played as freshmen and sophomores. Now they're juniors and seniors. They took their licks a couple years ago. Now it's their time to feast on teams, but not so fast. As Uxbridge said, they are a program right now, and they expect to win as well. All right, one more timeout. Man of the match time when we return on The Frenzy. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is brought to you by Nichols College. Learn, lead, succeed. Berterra <laughs> Nissan of Auburn, Unibank, Pucci's Fine Jewelry, the law offices of Joseph J. Curriculum, the Sullivan Group, the Central Mass Safety Council, Holy Cross Athletics. Visit us online at GoHolyCross.com, Mid-State Auto of Auburn, and Milford Federal. All right, man of the match time. My man of the match is Grafton's Afatu Melifanwu. 232 yards of offense and three touchdowns in leading Grafton to a big victory at home. Melifanwu is my man of the match. Defense wins championships. Blake Lewis, two interceptions tonight for Wachusa. I think that's now three on the season. The Mountaineers looking good in a comeback win over Fitchburg to go undefeated so far on the season. And Kev, when you look at the teams right now, talk about defenses, Algonquin 2-0, they've given up singular touchdowns, a kick return to Neshoba and a touchdown tonight to Marlboro, 2-0 Algonquin and their defense playing well. Yeah, and you look at that Wachusa team, and right now it's a program. You, it's the Wachusa that we've come to know and love for years now, and it starts up front. It's a big line. It's a strong physical line on both sides of the ball. That's how they're going to win games, in the trenches, with the pit crew on defense, with the hogs on offense. That's what they're doing right now, and that's why they're 2-0. Uh, you know, I read in the, uh, in the newspaper today, the Jim Wilson column on grid bits, Auburn has the longest winning streak active in Central Mass. Here we go again. The Rockets 2-0 with an impressive win over Tingsboro. And it was an emotional win a, week, a little over a week ago. So, you know, to come back to play in a different atmosphere, because it was mm -hmm. certainly different tonight. Yeah. Auburn, an impressive win. Steve Saucer helping lead the way. Yeah, and we said about that Leicester team, that's a great win. Looking at the college side of things, how about Assumption right now? They are rolling again. They are ranked 17th in the country, and they're only going to get higher and higher from week to week. And right now, you look at that defense, just ball hawking, picking the ball off, strip sacks. They're all over defensively, and then that's contagious. And this offense right now with Monks and company and Grant, they are rolling offensively. I don't think there's a team that can stop them in the NE10. They're ready to go to the to the NCAAs again. I'm crowning it right now. You are the Assumption Insider. I'm telling you right now. Chesney's got a wagon right now for Assumption. It is great to see. You know what? Bay Path with a big win tonight at home. They were real close in a game against St. Bernard's in week one. They could very easily be 2-0. So credit to the new coaching staff, although they still have Tony Salvaggio up there with Bay Path. Remember, Al Demby, the venerable one, has retired. Bay yeah. pass one and one. They're in pretty good shape right now. And Neshoba, too, coming off the deck. And uh, Neshoba with a big win here in week two over Shrewsbury. We talked about it. Division two, even though Neshoba's 2A, Division two's wide open. See you tomorrow night at 7.